We are going to be talking about flip-flops, but sometimes you use the word latch here. A latch is a binary storage device. It really just holds the value for you. And notice when you look at the diagram for it, the output of this depends on what? Whatever you have for input here, plus, look at the, look at the output for this. It depends on the value of S, also on what the value of this one, the output of this piece. So the output becomes an input. You can see the cross wires, you can see them? So your output depends on two things, an external input and the state that this flip-flop is at. And there's different flip-flops and they react differently based on the inputs to them. So we're going to be looking at the different flip-flops on the market. The most common ones are uh, SR flip-flop, JK flip-flop, Master Slave flip-flop, T flip-flop, and D flip-flop. So we'll take a look at most of them and see what they look like. So this is a, just a picture for, I'll draw a picture for an SR or JK flip-flop or a D flip-flop. So flip-flops. FF. There's different type of flip-flops. The first one I'm gonna be looking at is called the D flip-flop. Now I'll explain to you why they call the D flip-flop. If you have, you have a ruler here. Let me get a ruler, try to be neat a little bit there. <clears throat> Let me put the truth table for the D flip-flop. You have two input and one output. The inputs are the D input, that's the data coming in, and the current state. We'll call it Q. If your current state is zero and D is zero, your next state I call it Q asterisk over it. That's the next state. Will be zero. The way it works. If your current state is zero and D is one, your next state is always a one for this flip flop. If your current state is one and your data is zero, your next state is a zero. And if your current state is one, D is one, the next state is one. What do you notice about that flip-flop? You notice anything about it? Look at the next state in relation to D. What do you notice about them? It's the same thing. Can you see it? So our next state, we'll call it Q with the asterisk over it, and D. If D is zero, you're getting the next state to be zero. If D is one, your next state is one. Why they call it D flip-flop? Anyone? The output follows what? The data. It's really called data flip-flop. So your output is going to be exactly whatever D is. When D is zero, I don't care where you are right now. Once D is zero, your output goes to zero. Once D is one, your output goes to one, regardless what the current state is. So that's a one flip-flop has one input, two output. 
Every flip-flop has two outputs, by the way. One is Q, the other one Q complement. And some of these flip-flop, actually, we have a clock on them. Nothing happened till the clock comes in. So this is Q. This is Q naught. You have one input, and that's D. But if I draw this one, be careful on the bottom there. Sometimes you'll see us put a clock like this. We say this is the clock. And in other cases, you'll see me draw the flip-flop. Depends on what kind of flip-flop. Oh, I just realized I have that. There we go. Like that, quickly. This is Q. This is Q bar. This is D. But now the clock, instead of being a bubble here, without the bubble. What does that mean? When you see a bubble like this, when you see most of these flip-flop actually they're synchronized. We need to have a clock in the system to make sure they all change at the same time. Otherwise, if this one's changing, that's changing different time, it doesn't do us any good. I competed last year in canoeing here in the Connecticut River. And we got up there, we had a team from STCC to compete there. And the first race, we were all going crazy, pedaling so hard, but not in sync. We barely won. So on the second time, we had somebody at your drummer telling us, right, left, you're doing sync. And it makes a difference. We all move at the same time. Well, you want these, all these flip-flop to click and move at the same time. You don't want one clicking when this one is not ready for it. So we have a clock that runs these. When you see the clock like this, that tells you actually this flip-flop works when the clock goes from high to low. That's what the bubble is. That's called trailing edge as the clock goes from high to low. And this one, because there is no bubble, this one actually will go on the rising edge or leading edge. So if there's a clock with a bubble that works on the trailing edge when the clock goes from high to low, this one, everything shifts when the clock goes from zero to one, where this one from one to zero. Normally the clock will be like a square wave looking like this. Actually, I can do a quick circuit for these. I'll do it once. Where's the graph paper? Do I have graph paper? Makes my life easy if I have it. Come on, graph paper, please. Nope. I found two sheets, I think. Maybe. There we go. I found some here. So if I do a clock there, went too far with it. This is the part that's time consuming. Oh, stay there. So this is my clock.
too many of them. I made the mistake by putting too many of them. I think you get the idea. I'm not going to do all the way to the end. But you have a clock inside your computer that gives you these pulses. And let's say our D flip-flop looks like this. I mean the D input, not the flip-flop. There's D. I'll just make it go up and down when I feel like it. Let's say this is D, the data. This is the clock. That's the data. Now, if you actually have a flip-flop that works on the rising edge, the leading edge, we're going to be looking when the clock goes from 0 to 1. So here's what's happening. The clock goes here from 0 to 1, right there. See that one? So it goes back to 1 now. It was 0, it goes to 1. And it will stay there. Then the clock goes from 0 to 1. It sees 1 here. It stays 1 all the way to here. The clock goes 0 to 1. It sees what? Low. So it comes back to 0. And we'll stay that. I'm not putting the delays there till the clock goes from 0 to 1. 0 to 1, what's D equal to? 1. This one goes to 1. And stays 1 till the next clock. Next clock goes 0 to 1, it sees 1, stays 1. Then when the clock goes 0 to 1, this one looks like it was 0 drop down to zero and continues. If your flip-flop works on the trailing edge instead of the leading edge, that means we're going to be looking when the clock goes from high to low. Initially, data was high. So hopefully everything was high till the clock goes right there. Now it goes from 1 to 0, sees D as high, stays high all the way to here. Oh. Now the clock goes from 1 to 0. What is D equal to? 0. So it goes to 0. The clock goes 1 to 0, still sees 0 all the way to here. Uh, my, yep, up to here. The clock goes from 1 to 0, now it's 1. D is 1, it goes back to 1. Mm. 1 to 0, it sees 0. So notice your output is completely different. Actually, this one, I had a mistake. This one starts here, not there. I extend the line too far. Where's that eraser? That little piece here hanging there. That's not here. So that's what the output will look like, completely different. Some work on the rising edge when the clock goes from 0 to 1. Other flip-flop work on the trailing edge when the clock goes from 1 to 0. We just have to be aware of it, how the clock, I mean, how this uh, flip-flop works.
Now let's take another flip-flop. Uh, and by the way, most of these flip-flops also have another button called preset and clear. Clear, if you have a clear button on it, is going to make that zero. Pre, that means preset, is going to start with this one being one. So you might see a button that says like this on it, pre. Usually with the bar over it, which means what? If you want to reset this, preset it to one, you make that a zero, that will make that preset to one. Some might have something called clear on it with the bubble or no bubble. If you see a bubble like this, that means if you put a zero on this, it's going to make Q here being zero. You can't put a zero and a zero there. You can't tell them reset it to zero and set it to one at the same time. It doesn't happen. It's one or the other. So if you want to start with the zero, you can clear it. If you want to start with the one, you can preset that, tap it, preset it, then disconnect it. It has a value of one to start with. All for flop have these options on them. You can preset them, you can clear them. So that's the D flip flop. We also have other flip flops on the market, SR and JK. So let's look at the SR flip flop. The SR flip-flop has two inputs. One is called S, one is called R. Why they call them S and R? Set, reset. From the name, set and reset. The truth table, S, R, and I'll give you the current state, Q, and what the next state is going to be. Use a graph paper, it'll be easier on me. Since you have three inputs, you're gonna have eight combinations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you have zero, zero, zero. Q next is zero. Zero, zero, one. Q next is what? One. Zero, one, zero. That's a zero. Zero, one, one. That's a zero. One, zero, zero. That's a one. One, zero, one, that's a one. One, 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 not allowed. One, one, was it? Uh, one, one, zero, one, 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 not allowed. Again, I said they call them SR flip-flop from the name, set and reset. Here we go. SR and Q next. When S and R are both zeros, that's the first two rows here. Look at a Q next in relation to Q. It's the same. Q next the same as Q previous. No change. When it's zero one, remember, S is set, R is what? Reset. 
when one of these guys is one, when the reset is one, reset means what? Make it what? Try again. Zero. So zero one, your output is zero. If it's one zero, set it to one. Doesn't matter what Q old is. And one one is not allowed on this app, app M. I don't know why the app I'm stuck in my head today. On this flip flop, one one is not allowed. Why? You cannot set and reset. Exactly. You can't make it one and zero at the same time. You tell them to make it one and make it zero. Well, make up your mind which way you want it to be. So an SR flip-flop, you can't have S and R being one and one. Let me see if I have a picture. I don't have a picture of SR flip-flop. But usually you have two inputs. There we go. This is SR flip-flop. Took me a while to realize there's a box here on this ruler and there's circle and op amps and everything. It has two outputs, Q and Q naught. It has two inputs, R and S. It has a clock normally on it. It could also work on the leading edge or on the trailing edge, but we have a clock, CLK. We'll have a reset and preset on them, clear and preset. So you might have a clear button on it too. If it has a bubble on it, which means we'll work on, you make sure that's low to make it clear. And you might have a preset, I'll make sure it works on the high. I'm just making that up. Preset. So if you want to have the value of Q being one when you start, you tap that preset button, you make sure that's high. It makes that one. If you want to start with Q being zero, you attach this to ground for a short time just to clear it, then disable it. Then start using it. You don't want to leave it connected here. Once you leave it connected, these are not changing. And again, the clock, in this case, I have it working on the leading edge, the rising, because I don't put a bubble. Another type flip-flop we have on the market called JK flip-flop. With JK flip-flop is the same as SR flip-flop, identical with the exception of one-to-one. -one. You can have one-to-one -one in it. SR, you can't, not allowed. J case is yes. So if you take the S, put J, you take the R, put K, you have actually up to here, you have the JK flip-flop. The difference is right there, the last row. With an SR, one-one is not allowed. With the JK, yes, you can use that. So I don't have to draw them lines here. I'll use a graph paper. It took me a while to realize that. So here's JK flip-flop. And this is the current state and that's the next state. Q next. If you have zero, 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 one. We said the first six choices, just like the SR flip-flop, when S and R both zeros, what was Q next? Zero. Uh, it was the same as Q. That would be a zero and a one here. When it was zero, one, that was a zero. When it was one zero, 
That is a one. So again, if I bring back my SR flip-flop and I put them side by side, notice zero one zero zero one one. Identical. But here's the difference. One one is not allowed here. One one is okay here. If I put one one zero, I'm gonna have a one. If I put one one one, I'm gonna have a zero. That's the JK flip flop. Now, let's see what that means. If I have JK and Q next. When J is zero and K is zero, we said Q next is gonna be what? The same as previous one, same as Q. No change. When it's zero, one, the result is what? Zero. zero. Reset, basically. When it's one, zero, one, that's a set. And here's the difference. One, one, and the other one was not allowed. Here we'll do what? Let's look at the one, one. When you put a one, one, Q next, when it was zero, became one. When it's one, became zero. That's the complement. It complements that. So here it stays the same. This one is zero, this one is one, this one is complement. That's the JK flip-flop. Let's look at the T flip-flop while I'm at it. A T flip-flop from the name T for toggle. Who knows what toggle means? Toggle. So that's a toggle switch. What's a toggle? If it's zero, you touch the switch, becomes, like if the power is on, you hit it, it becomes off. You hit it again, it goes on. Switches. So it toggles from zero to one, one to zero, back and forth. It goes between them. Our book doesn't even, dis oh, I see it, yep. In our book, they do. So the T flip-flop, or toggle flip-flop, again, can from name toggle, that's where it came from. The way it works, I'll give you, it says only one input has, just like the D flip-flop. Q and Q next. This is how that flip-flop works. If you have T is zero, Q is zero, your next state is zero. T is zero, Q is one, your next state is one. T is one, Q is zero, your next state is one. T is one, Q is one, your next state is zero. Let's take a closer look at it. So only two inputs here.
here's T, and here's Q next. When T is zero, notice when T is zero, your next state is the same as Q, you see it? That means keep it the same, no change. When T is one, look at your next state in relation to the current state, is what? It's the complement. That gives you the complement. When it's one becomes zero and zero becomes one. Okay. There's also master, slave, flip-flop. There's also clock, flip-flop, T, flip-flop, D, flip-flop. How do we use them? Let's take an example and go through it and see how do we use them. I'll take a simple one maybe. Let me take an example, something simple enough. Here's what we have. Let's take this story. We have this state diagram. We have three states. A, B, and C. Now, how many flip-flops do I need? How many? Well, each flip-flop has two outcome, Q and Q naught, or one and zero for Q. So it's two to the power of the number flip-flop has to be greater than or equal to the number of states. So can I use one flip-flop here to do this? What's two to the one? Two, is that bigger than three? No. What's two to the second? Four. Four. Is that bigger or equal to three? That's why I need two flip-flop. If you use three, one of them is a waste. It's not doing a single thing, just sitting there. So I will need three flip-flops, I mean two flip-flops. Well, if you have two flip-flops, we'll call them Q1 and Q2. You're gonna have how many combinations of choices? Four, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So let me call this state, state zero, zero. This is zero, one, this is one, zero. And when you're at this state, you always get a one, your output is a one. So here's my state diagram. When your input is zero, you stay there, but you get an output. Well, actually I have four states. Let's do another one here. When it's one, I go right here. This state has an output of one. I'm just making things up. If I'm a state zero, one, your output is zero. But if your input is one, you go to this one. If your input is zero, you go right there. If you are this state, your input is zero, you stay here. But if it's one, you go back here. Uh, is that what I want to do with it? No, that's all right. Well, I'll go right there. If it's one, I'll go right there. It really doesn't matter. I'm just trying to draft just different options. That's if it's one. If you have this state and your input is zero, you go right here. And if it's one, let's bring you back here. I'm trying to make a picture of a ghost, actually. I should have a smiley face because I was looking at this as eyes. I was about to do something here. 
you know. I was thinking I'd just try to make it like an ears and face and snowman or something. But I don't know. Close enough. Let's try to have fun with it. So we have, bless you, your output and your next state is going to be controlled by two inputs, Q1, Q2, where you are, and your also external input. You have an input here we'll call it X. So these are my three inputs. If I have three inputs, how many combinations do we have? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. My options are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Let's see what my next state is. Q1 next. Q2 next. And my output will call Z. Let's see. If you are state 0, 0, and your input is 0, what happens? You stay there. So let's stay there. And do you get an output? Yes. If you are state 0, 0, and your input is 1, you go to where? 1, 0, your output is 1. Now we're back right here. If you are 0, 1, your input is 0, you go to 0, 0. Your output is 1. If you're at 0, 1, your input is 1, you go to 1, 0. Your output is 1. If you're at 1, 0, right here, your input is 0, you stay there, and your output is 1. Oh, I forgot to give you the output for that one. Let's make the output here 0 on that one. If your state 1, 0 and your input is 1, you're going to go to 1, 1 and your output is 0. And finally, if you're right here, if you get 0 for an input, you go to 0, 0, you get a 1. And if you get a 1, you go to what? 0, 1 and you get a 0 there. Okay, let's decide what flip-flops we're going to use. Let's say I want to design a circuit that will do this for me. And let's say I want to use JK flip-flop. The question is, you're going to have two flip-flop. What do you attach to them? So I'm going to have JK flip-flop, two of them. Let me draw just quickly. Oh, that's tough on this one. Let me take two flip-flop and graph them there. And now I have no idea what to attach to them. There's my flip-flop. There's the first one. It 
has two inputs, two outputs. I have another one right here. Here's my other flip-flop. That's the first one, JK, that's Q1, and this is Q1 naught. This is Q2, and this is Q2 naught. JK flip-flop. This has two inputs, one is J, one is K. That's the second one, that's J2. That's K2. That's J1. That's K1. You wanna synchronize and put a clock on them, go ahead. You want the clock to work on the low end of it, that's fine. On the falling edge, that's fine. That's my clock. So they go up and down the same time. The question is, what do I attach right here to these two? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. I need to know what to attach to J1, K1, J2, and K2. I really wasn't smart when I did this table here because I didn't plan it correctly. I got to extend these lines now. You'll see why. I need to know what to attach to J and K. So I'm going to put two columns. I got to write really small because I need four columns here. One for J1, one for K1, one for J2 and one for K2. Let me look at the flip-flop one more time, that JK flip-flop. Let me take a closer look at it quickly. Where's my JK flip-flop? Here we go. I'm gonna put it right there. Can you see it? Well, the first one, it says, I wanna work backward now. Before, we used to give you a JK and Q and tell me what the next state is. Now I'm going to work backward. I'm going to give you this and that and tell me what J and K should be. Everyone see that? So I'm going to be looking at I'm going to be looking at this state and the next state and based on that decide what should I put for J and K here. Can you see the color of the yellow? That's what I need to look at. If I'm at state zero and I'm going to Q1 staying at state zero, notice this one says if you're at zero, if you put zero, zero, what? You stay the same, right? So I can make J zero and K zero, but there's another option I can make the next state zero. How? If K is one, it doesn't matter what the previous state is, it's gonna make it zero. So there's two options to go from zero to zero. So this is called the excitation table.
from 0 to 0, I need J and K. I can accomplish that by either making J and K 0, 0 or 0, 1. So basically, as long as J is 0, who cares what K is? Either option. So it is 0 and don't care. 0 to 1. How do you go from 0 to 1? Well, I can complement that by putting 1, 1. Right? That will switch me from 0 to 1. Or if I put 1, 0, it's going to force the next stage to be what? 1, regardless where it used to be. So as long as J is 1, don't care about K. Next state, 1, 0. Oh, 1, 0, that's a complement. That's this case. Or if I put 0, 1. 0, 1 is going to reset it for me. It's going to make a 0. So as long as K is 1, don't care about J. And the last one is 1 to 1. 1 to 1, I can keep it the same, which is right here, the first option, or this one. First and third row will do it for me. If I put 0, 0, that will keep it the same. If I put 1, 0, it's going to force it to be 1. doesn't matter what it used to be. So as long as K is 0, don't care about J. Okay. So now let's do J1K1. Quickly here. Going from 0 to 0. 0 and don't care. 0 to 1. 1 and don't care. 0 to 0. 0 and don't care. 0 to 1. 1 and don't care. 1 to 1. Don't care and 0. 1 to 1. Don't care in zero. One to zero. Don't care in one. And one to zero. Don't care in one. I'm looking right here. I also need to do this one and this one and put the result here. So quickly, let's try that. Zero to zero. Zero and don't care. 0 to 0, 0 and don't care. 1 to 0, don't care and 1. 0 to 0, 0 and don't care. 0 to 1, 1 and don't care. 1 to 0, don't care and 1. 1 to 1, don't care and 0. We're almost done. I got to do a K map for each one of these, then I'm done. So let's do a K map for J1. We do the K map horizontally or vertically. I can't remember for three variable. Doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to st I'll go horizontally, less space. Again, my inputs are Q1, Q2, and X. This is for J1. 0, 1. 0, 1. And don't care the rest of them. So what's the best way to read this one? Is it the 4 on the bottom? Which is X. Less gates. I don't have to use gates. Let's look at K1. Don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. Four of them. Zero, zero, one, one. 
best probably group is right there, which is what? Q2. That's it. Two more. One for J2. J2, zero, zero, don't care, don't care. Zero, one, don't care, don't care. It looks like for this, oh, I don't need the middle four. I need the one, right? So that would be what? Q1, X, And now I'm going to do K2. Q1, Q2, X. Don't care, don't care. 1, 1. Don't care, don't care. 1, 0. Tab 4, four I'll take that. Or if you group the zero, it's only one zero. Well, tab four is fine. That'll give me what? X bar. X bar, or I still have here, I can take these four, which is what? Q, Q1 bar. Q1 bar. What were you thinking about zero? I can group the zeros. If I group the zeros, I could take this zero with that zero. And if I did that, will give me the same answer because that'll be x1 bar q1 bar yeah and I need one for the z the output while I'm at it let's get the z here what are you getting candy or not candy let's see q1 q2 x z it's one 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 four ones one zero one zero and again if I group these two zeros same as this one can you see it if you group that that's actually X bar plus Q1 bar or you took, or took the top four with these four so that's the same gate for both of them that will trigger to drop the candy and now once I have these, I'm done. I just got to go back to my table and connect them. What is attached to J1? X, right? I got an input here. Is there X not? Yep. I have an input, outside input, we'll call it X here. And I also have X not. Out of it, I can put a not gate. If I need that. So what's attached to J1? X. What's attached to K1? Q2. So here's Q2. If you want to make it nice and neat, run this wire up there. Looks like I dipped down one box there, but that's okay. What's attached to J2? Q1 and X, right? So that's an AND gate. Q1 and X. And what's attached to K2? Q1 bar or X bar, so that's an OR gate. Attached to it, Q1 bar, that's this one. Or X bar, let me extend that line down a little bit more so I can run it through.
And what is my output, by the way? The candy machine, to drop the candy, it's the same design coming out of this one, it's the same gate. And this is the circuit that I need for that state diagram. Whew. 